welcome to h and Daily. I'm Susanna Hopsalin, Senior Editor for Hospitals and Health Networks Magazine. The Iowa Health System is in the process of changing its delivery model from traditional hospital-based episodic care to a physician-driven integrated care system that's patient-centered. Today, I'm joined by Bill Lever, CEO, and Dr. Alan Kaplan, CMO of the Iowa Health System, to discuss transitioning to population health management. Welcome, Bill and Alan. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You know, you've been so successful with your clinical transformation efforts. Why change the care delivery model? Well, I think that the the environment is forcing that. Uh, I don't think you can pick up a periodical, one of your magazines or uh, any other trade publication, or look at what's happening um, on, a, on a nationwide basis in terms of health care and not think that we have to change, that we have to deliver care in a different way and create better value than we do today, that our system is too fragmented, too episodic, and we'll never, uh, we'll never be able to rein in costs when we're focused on volume, not on quality. And so we began there. And we have been working on this for uh, at least three years now in terms of how do we develop a better model, a better system of care. And um, we believe that all the things we're working on, physician alignment, creating care coordinating capability, will serve us well regardless of the payment model in which we're going to be reimbursed. That um, those, we believe those payment models are going to be focused on value. The things that we're developing in terms of integrating our system will help create value that we're going to get rewarded for having done that. Now, will we have to continually tweak and evolve and uh, change some of the things that we think today are going to be right Five years from now, absolutely. I don't think we view this as we've created the perfect model for any circumstance. But the elements, the fundamentals, will serve us well regardless of what the external environment requires of us. As you're building this regional network, how are you going to ensure alignment among providers as well as physicians? Well, several different ways. First of all, um, and Alan can talk about uh, how we align incentives of our physicians. That physician alignment piece becomes very important so that they're all working on the same clinical initiatives, the same quality outcomes that we want to achieve, and helping to drive the development of a system of care. That's number one. Number two is in our, in our system, although we're very decentralized, our regional CEOs who are responsible for their regional markets are very involved in helping to set system strategy, helping us to develop the building blocks that I just referred to. They are buying into that from the beginning. We then have engaged our board in a, in a very real way in terms as we have, have developed this model of care and how we want to get paid in the future. So our board's expectation is you are going to develop this. You are going to make this a reality. And what about those physicians? How are you aligning the physicians around the regional care management? Sure. As, as we're all aware that if the physicians aren't aligned, no matter what we do to retool the system for population health management, it's not going to be effective. So the Iowa Health System has a four-part strategy to aligning physicians. Uh, first, we've made a board-level decision and baked into our strategic plan that we will transition from a traditionally hospital-centric system to one that is patient-centric, physician-driven. Two, we know that in order to do that, we need to develop physician leaders, ca leaders capable of being effective at all levels of governance, leadership, and management. So we have a physician leadership academy, which I'll touch upon. Three, uh, we are like most hospital systems, we have an aggregated uh, physician employed group and we need to transition them to an effective clinical enterprise. And the fourth part of the strategy is engaging the independent physicians with our employed physicians in a clinically integrated network. Bill, do you have any final words of advice for other hospital CEOs that want to pursue this path of population health management? 
I would uh, say a couple of things. One, um, get started if you haven't started. Um, this is not uh, quick. It is not easy. Um, incredibly complex. Uh, as I said, we have been at it for about three years. We probably are not uh, fully ready to execute. We were very close. Uh, we'll continue to learn, uh, but this takes time. So uh, expect that. Secondly, that I think uh, my our leaders in our systems need to be willing to invite physicians in to be part of helping to create the solution. We cannot um, continue to function in the future of thinking we have to have all the answers. Um, I think that we have to be uh, comfortable that physicians, by and large, are going to come to the right conclusion, to the right answer. If you give them the right focus and the outcomes that you really want, They'll, they'll create the best solutions. Thanks so much for joining us today.